Hello everybody and welcome! We all heard it back when Kerbal Space Program 2 was announced back in August 2019, the sequel of KSP, which is now officially the best computer game available, is going to have multiplayer integrated. The big problem is we have not seen or heard any details about this functionality. Only that it is supposedly very fun. I'm not currently able to give any specifics around multiplayer. Okay. Other than to say, as we've been testing it internally, I have never heard people laugh so hard. Now, there have been mods for the original KSP that enable multiplayer. For instance, Dark Multiplayer or more recently, Luna Multiplayer. I have to admit, I have never tried any of those due to the way that I have played KSP in the past, so multiplayer wasn't really on my radar that much, but I can absolutely imagine some scenarios where it would be fun to bring some other people along for the ride, especially when considering the enhanced scope of the upcoming sequel. However, in order for a stock multiplayer mode to work in Kerbal Space Program 2 in any shape or form, the developers need to solve a few things right out of the gate. I'm trying to ignore specific features because I wanted to focus on the general problems that need to be addressed. Here's what I think these are. Let's start with an obvious one. Time Warp. This is probably the first one that will come to anyone's mind that has ever played KSP 1. When planning and performing any mission outside of low carbon orbit, your vehicle will have to fly days, weeks, months, sometimes years until it reaches its destination. In what turned out to be a very wise decision, the original KSP developer has implemented a time warp feature that can cut these transfer times down significantly. So if we imagine that you're in KSP Team 2 multiplayer, what happens if you just completed your interplanetary transfer burn to Duna and you want to skip ahead a few hundred days so you can finally start your landing approach on that planet? And at the same time, somebody else just wants to do a few short missions to the moon. Well, there are a few ideas how to solve this problem and the mods I mentioned earlier have already uh, their own approaches to that. One way is to let the player with the long time warp skip ahead into the future, while everybody else stays in the relative past. Remember, time is relative. For them, the interplanetary ship will appear to fly out into space at regular speed until they have completed what they want to do, and fast forward to the present of the other player and they catch up, and then the time syncs up to, uh, with all players. Okay, but what happens if you're one of the players in the past and you want to interact with the vessel on time warp? Can you dock with it? Can you sabotage it or maybe even destroy it? What effect would that have on the other player? They are already in the future relative to you and for them the vessel has already arrived intact. Yes, you could protect these vessels, making them invincible to any interaction, but then again, this is just one possibility to how to solve this problem. It's going to be exciting how the developers of KSP2 will approach this conundrum. But since I mentioned the possibility of destroying a vessel, let's talk about another issue. The again problem. Regular viewers of this channel will know that in my videos, vehicles occasionally disintegrate in a spectacular fashion. Again. 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 Again! Well, okay, not just occasionally. My point is that rapid unplanned disassembly is something you have to expect in Kerbal Space Program. Usually you revert to launch or to the vehicle assembly building to tweak something if you found out the root cause is in a design flaw, or you use a quick save and uh, reload that. But now other people come into the mix, say you crash into a space station that another player has built. If you revert a quick save, would all players be reset to that point in time or only you? Would that space station still be destroyed? What if the owner of the space station also loads a new game? Is this maybe such a big problem that the developers will disable reverting and quick loading a game completely in multiplayer? 
how are you then supposed to really play an interstellar game where you will probably have to manage multiple colonies to produce resources and parts for ships and where you will need to construct new spaceships that can reach those distant stars? Kerbal Space Program 2 could offer a central save game for the person owning the server that's hosting the game, so only those servers' save games can be used. Or maybe there is some kind of voting mechanism asking all available players if they want to revert to a state earlier in the game. Whatever the solution to this problem is going to be, it will be interesting to see how the developers went about it. Since I mentioned voting and coordinating with players, here's another thing. COMMUNICATION Every time when the number of human beings involved exceeds one, you need a way to communicate, especially if you want to achieve a goal together. And since it is fair to assume that KSP2 is going to focus on cooperative multiplayer, this is going to be key. Now, here's my experience with communication features in multiplayer games. Most are inadequate. <laughs> No, for real, most only have a mediocre chat functionality or badly implemented voice communication. Here's just an idea. Basically everyone nowadays in the gaming space uses Discord to coordinate a group of gamers from AAA hardcore titles to, yes, mobile game communities. As far as my limited knowledge of Discord goes, there's a software development kit and APIs to integrate functionality into a game. I don't know how well this could work with the vision the developers have planned, but in the same way that they already use established tools like Unity or other development frameworks, why reinvent the wheel when there is already a specialist solution available that could solve the communication problem or at least offload it a bit? Granted, having to rely on a third party for an essential functionality of your game creates a big dependency. But I think it is safe to say that Discord is going to stick around for a few years. Unless Microsoft decides to buy it for the rumored 10 billion dollars and decides to revoke all API access unless the game runs on Xbox. That could tank a title that relies exclusively on Discord for communication in-game. Whether or not the KSP2 developers will go this route or try to integrate a bespoke communication solution, we will see. Honestly, I can't blame them if they go for their own solution based on the dependency I talked about. On the other hand, having Discord integration where you could segment your mission teams into channels based on tasks like surface mission, resource gathering, etc. would be a really neat thing to have. Speaking of nice things to have… Mod support. One of Kerbal Space Program's biggest appeals is its ability to handle mods. And the sequel is already confirmed to also offer this functionality. In the original game you could completely transform your world and enhance the stock experience significantly. And of course you would want to have this when playing with other friends. So how would Case P2 go about providing this? One of the simplest solutions would be to just require a list of mods when joining a multiplayer game. Whoever starts the game server would have to decide which mods should be used and then everybody who jumps on would have to have the same mods as well. Alright, but what if you really want to play with your friends but have no idea where they got their mods or maybe they uh, have some bespoke mod that they created themselves and it's not available on any of the known platforms? We don't know yet how KSP2 will handle mods overall and whether or not loading mods without restarting the game is a possibility would be cool. But wouldn't it be nice to have a feature that would allow a new player to load the required mods automatically when joining a multiplayer game? After leaving, the mods could be removed automatically or the player is given a choice to keep them for his single player experience. Again, these are just my ideas and thoughts about this problem. I am sure the developers have their own vision where they want to go with this. We just have to see where that is and when the game will finally be released. When it finally does, there will of course be an initial in big interest like with every shiny new toy. But what happens in the mid and long term? This is my next problem the developers need to take care of. 
long-term motivation. Let's be very honest here. I have basically experienced and explored everything there is in the original KSP. Return mission from EVE? Done that multiple times. Tool 5? Done it as well, not just once. Max out the tech tree? Done. Everything that inspires me to create new things in Kerbal Space Program nowadays comes from external sources. Be it challenges posted on forums or on Reddit or real-world events like the launch and landing of the Perseverance rover. And soon the flight of Ingenuity, the first aircraft ever to lift off from Mars. So how can you make sure that your KSP2 game servers aren't deserted a few weeks or months after the game's release? Well, yeah, there is media and celebrity hype, of course, which managed to keep games like Among Us relevant. But aside from a lucky break or millions spent on advertising campaigns, I'm looking at you, Fortnite, how do you keep a game engaging for a larger audience and for a long time? Granted, KSP does not suffer that much from this problem already. I mean, the game is going to celebrate its 10-year anniversary in a few months and it is still very much alive. One big reason for this is the constant stream of updates that Kerbal Space Program still receives. We can only hope that the publisher will give the upcoming sequel the same treatment. And maybe they will find a way to integrate events into public multiplayer servers should they exist, like prevent a group of asteroids from pulverizing your colony, where players will have to work together to avert disaster. Whatever they might come up with, I hope we will soon get the hint as to where the multiplayer part of KSP2 is headed. And that's it! That's my list of 5 things the developers of Kerbal Space Program 2 have to get right in order for multiplayer to be a success. As I said in the beginning, this is just my take on the subject. I'm sure there are many other things that need to be discussed. So let me know in the comments what you think uh, are problems that need to be solved in order for KSP2 multiplayer to be a success. I'd love to hear your take on the subject. Something that I believe we can all agree on is that us fans would like to see more about KSP2. And there is still hope that there will be an early access period before the official release, which is currently set for fall 2022. So far we have only seen short snippets of new stuff added to the game recently like CLOUDS or power generators of various sizes. Let's hope that the developers will finally show us some multiplayer goodness in the near future. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.